Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This week, we'll continue talking about the best arguments I've heard for atheism. Next up is number three, the question of recognition. Even if you have a personal experience of God's existence, how can you be sure that it was really God who you saw, heard, or felt, and not some other extremely powerful being? After all, human senses are really very limited. How would you recognize God when you saw him with absolute certainty? Most importantly, why would the being who appeared to you necessarily be the God who you believe in? Unfortunately, this isn't the strongest argument in the bunch for several reasons. First, because many people have had experiences of a God who they didn't believe in. A good example of this is St. Paul, who spent quite some time persecuting everyone who dared to claim that Jesus was God until he had a dynamic experience of Jesus himself, which struck him blind, converting him to Christianity almost instantly. There are many other, more recent examples of this, steadfast atheists experiencing visions of Jesus, Mary, the Sacred Heart, and many other distinctly Christian things. I've even heard of a Protestant who converted to Catholicism after a vision that he saw of his mother, herself a very strong Protestant, in hell. So clearly not all of these visions show us a God in whom we already believe. The second problem with this argument is that it rests, at least partly, on the belief that experience isn't a valid proof of anything. This is a mild form of skepticism which is self-contradicting. The third problem is that even if it didn't challenge the notion of experiential proof, it would at least be challenging your ability to properly understand your own experiences. And this comes with its own set of problems. You see, the purpose of pondering our experiences is to arrive at the truth, and as we've touched on briefly, you can never know the truth without being honest. Because of this, we need to be honest with ourselves when we evaluate information. If I experience God's presence and he gives me a message, then I have very strong proof of God's existence, the proof of my own experiences, and it would be dishonest of me to ignore this proof unless equally strong proof could be brought forth to indicate that my senses weren't reliable, like traces of hallucinogens in my bloodstream or an aneurysm or something. However, if the proof of my experiences is stronger than the proof against them, or if there simply isn't any proof against them, it wouldn't be honest of me to doubt my senses. As I said in episode 6, we need a reason to doubt our senses. In the absence of such a reason, we're justified, even obligated, to believe them. Otherwise, we begin our descent into full-fledged skepticism, the self-contradicting outlook I mentioned earlier. However, I would say that the biggest weakness to this argument is that it doesn't challenge any of the proofs for God aside from personal experience. It doesn't challenge the proof I brought forth about the universe requiring a cause, or about objective moral virtues requiring a cause, and it doesn't explain how motion or potential existence began. This argument isn't reliable because there are holes in it. However, even if it was reliable, it still wouldn't disprove the existence of God. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.